two blank. But today I'm going to do a bench frame up for one of my log benches or, well, reclaimed wood fence, uh, benches. We have some two by fours uh, fence wood from some torn down fences that blew over last uh, season. And I came across a couple of old closet doors that a neighbor was tossing and I went ahead and grabbed them. In fact, I refinished two for my aunt so that she could uh, actually use them uh, in a new closet. And uh, I've cut one of the larger ones that doesn't fit in the household down to 48 inches. So this is going to be the back of my bench. So I went ahead and spent some time last night and drew up some plans. This is going to be uh, angle bench number three because I keep monkeying with different designs. Uh, basically I'm going to set the angle of the bench back about 11 degrees. Well, I'm going to do an 11 degree cut to set the bench back. Very comfortable seating option. I went through and checked the angle of a ton of benches in the house to try and uh, decide what angle I wanted. Uh, there are good tutorial videos on YouTube for angles, finding angles with a speed square. Um, effectively, you want to use your pivot and you can see where your angle matches up here and that'll tell you. I'll probably do a video on that later, probably not is I'm lazy. So here we go. Basically uh, the bench is going to consist of two boxes, a lower box. So basically a bottom shelf for knickknacks, items, just something to look good. And then the upper box is going to hold the seat. And then of course the seat back. So we're going to build two boxes, four legs, We've got our back and we're going to use fence pickets cut down to do our seat and our box tops, basically. I may not get to that one today or in this video, but uh, we'll see what comes up. Basically, uh, my boxes are going to be, um, I've got it figured out where my box is going to be 45 by 22 inches. Because once I get the legs on and the outsides of the boxes, we're going to lag them in then I'm going to come out with 48 inches, um, 45 plus 3, using 2 by 4s 2 by 4s inch and a half. You can actually measure your average 2 by 4 is going to be an inch and a half. And what it is, is when they measured the term 2 by 4 and 4 by 8, they referred to what they called rough cut lumber. Um, nowadays, most lumber that you get is not rough cut, uh, especially if you're shopping at Lowe's, Home Depot, any of your typical hardware stores, it's going to be a little bit more refined since sanding down done. And hence you're going to get, instead of two, you're going to get an inch and a half. And you're going to get three and a half on the four inch side. You basically lose a half inch on each side. So we're going to do our quick measurements. If I want a 45 by 22 inch box, and I want to go ahead and, I'm not going to 45 these. Um, simply because I need that extra robust wood beef on the sides when we lag our legs on. I want to be able to lag my leg on through the side 2x4 and the edge of our, well, let me get that. Our other, our front and back 2x4s. So what we're going to end up doing is going to look kind of like Imagine this is the side, and this is our front. We're going to go like this. And then our leg is going to sit. I'm glad I kept all these little scraps. Kind of here. And it's going to sit at that 11 degree angle. And then that's going to allow me to drive two screws or lags, I haven't decided yet, all the way through. And it's going to keep this entire box on both front and side kind of anchored in there. It's a little bit more robust design. I could 45 and do the same thing, but I want that extra boot. I, I really do. So that's how we're going to do this one. And don't mind the dogs here. 
So, because I'm thank you, because I'm doing a box frame, I need to take into account the inch and a half on each side. So that's three inches. So my long front and back runs are going to be 43 inches. And I want my 22 inches on the sides. So we're going to cut two 43 inch front and back boxes for the bottom box, two 43 inch for the top box or the seat. And then we're going to cut 22s for the sides, of course, respectively. So we're going to have four 43 inch and four 22 inch. Now, because the saw is loud, when I do my cutting, I am going to mute the twitch. So you won't hear me. You'll see me being a goofball. Uh, you might notice I'm not wearing eye protection. I highly suggest you do if you're working with a saw. It, it's a personal preference. Um, when I'm grinding and doing things that's going to throw a large amount of sawdust at me, that's when I'll use my eye protection. Typically, with the miter saw, it, it's got a good dust catch. It's still going to kick dust all over my laptop rig, but that's fine too. I typically do not do the eye protection. So, let's see what we can do. We're going to go ahead and mark out. Let's take some of these shorter pieces. Now, you notice I've got a lot of damage here. I did do a straight cut here. When you're working with lumber, a lot of times um, it's preferable to do a quick cut and cut that factory edge off so that it's flattened to your miter blade because some saws are a little quirky. Uh, the other thing I like to do is I like to take my speed square and I will actually bring that blade over and I will make sure that my blade is square to the plate of the saw, to the, to the base plate of the saw there. Um, most miter saws will uh, angle both on the vertical axis and, of course, the horizontal axis. So I kind of want to check, um, not just up against the base, but I also want to check against my fence. And what I'm looking for with my square is I want to make sure it's flush against the fence and flush against the blade. And I like to do it on both sides because a lot of these fences, one side will get tweaked. And depending on what side you push your wood up against when you're holding it, you may end up with you know, an odd angle. So I've got a piece here that I've already gotten a clean cut on. And we're going to look at, we don't want this damage, obviously. So this might be perfect for one of our 22s. So we're going to go ahead, take my pencil. Get my 22 inch mark, take my speed square, give me a good solid line to work with that I can actually see. Notice I like to jam my pencil in my hat. Um, I always keep extra pencils handy because I don't want to have to stop and sharpen them. Um, so, <coughs> so this is my uh, speed square, or an angle square, sometimes they call it. And these are basically carpenter's squares with level. I have many, many, many of these hand tools. Uh, a lot of times when you're doing large construction projects, you need to have multiple levels. And you're leveling, particularly with purse rail, railings along a wall. You want to be able to level that railing this way and this way. And you want to be able to make sure that it looks straight up against the wall. So if I'm doing a long 8 foot or 10 foot run, I want to be able to drop these at varying places so that I can go back to the end and make my adjustments as I need. Um, I've done a lot of purse rail projects like that. Uh, if you get a little wonky from the wall, there's no such thing as a square wall. So you want to square it to the wall, but you want to make sure it's still also as square as you can normally so that when you're looking down the wall your thing doesn't go like this so we're going to go ahead and move this piece of maple veneer that my dogs were so kind enough to knock over Set that down. i use that for a lot of scroll saw projects things like that um, i'm going to check my wood make sure i don't like that split so we're going to see in fact, that split goes all the way down. And even though I measured that, 
I don't want that split in my woodcraft, at least not this project. I might use that piece for a small end table, something where that split's not going to interfere with the structure of my wood. Since this is a bench that people will be sitting on, we want to make sure and have a little bit better piece of lumber. So we'll grab another one. And one thing I really like about old fence wood is you get the knots. Sometimes you get bolt holes. This was obviously a piece from a fence or something where they bolted something through. Um, most of my neighbors were kind enough. We had storms blow through last year that took out a large number of my neighbor's fences. And they were kind enough to let me have their lumber. They were happy enough to let me have their lumber because then they didn't have to pay to get rid of it. So we're gonna make a 22 inch mark. We are doing 22. We'll go ahead and take that speed square again. Zip our, zip our line. We're gonna label this one. I like to do my measurements first, side. We'll set that over there. And let's see what else we got. We got... This is the other side of that split piece, I believe. But the split doesn't protrude. This is actually going to be a pretty good piece to work with for another 22. So we're going to drop a 22. 22 inches. Side. And if I'm lucky, this piece is long enough, maybe, once I do that cut, I will go ahead and measure, and I might be able to get another 22 out of this. So I'm going to go ahead and mute for just a moment, if it'll let me. There we go. I'm going to make a cut. Okay, back on track here. I'm going to have to edit that out of the GoPro video, but life is okay. I'm going to look at my wood, make sure there's no major structural problems. It doesn't look like it, except that end where it's rotted. But that end is going to go away. Now, one little tip that I learned um, when I was doing commercial trim carpentry, particularly when it comes to trim carpentry and tight joints, um, tight angles, is uh, you want to make sure, and there's, well, there's two tricks here, but one thing a lot of us have is multiple measuring tapes, and It's common for a measuring tape to be off by a 64th or a very small amount, but when you're cutting, particularly when you're cutting 45s, or in the case of uh, like when I do my wishing wells, uh, it's a 22 and a half degree angle, which gives me eight sides. Um, it's basically half of a 45 degree angle is 22 and a half. When you're doing cuts like that, uh, crown molding, trim, things of that nature, you want to use the same measuring tape all the way through. Um, just that little 64th, or if you've got a wonky end on there, can really ruin your day. The other thing you want to do is when you make your cuts, and you noticed I, I had it muted, but I measured to make sure I got 22 inches. I might have to shave off a little bit. If I cut it too short, there's a problem. So I always line up my line. Now I'm ambidextrous, so it's not uncommon for me to cut on both sides of the saw. 
but I always line up my line with the edge of the blade. And keep in mind that blade's going to have a kerf, and depending on how thick the blade is, um, most are fairly thin. You can measure it. It's usually a sixteenth. Um, some are quarter inch. Uh, some are an eighth inch. Um, it really, really depends on the blade you're working with. If you're working with dado blades and doing, uh, you know, like keystone cuts, things like that, you always want to keep in mind the thickness of your blade when you cut on that line. So when I mark my line, I mark my line at 22 inches, and then I want to keep that blade right on the edge of the line. It should just take off the, the edge of the pencil mark, and you should be good. So those are kind of two gotchas. That gives us three 22 inches. And I know I need four four gates. So we'll kind of look here. Now this one's interesting. I really like that knot. But for the fact that it's going to be a side, I don't know. Especially with that hole there. I don't want that hole, again, in my woodwork. The good news is that hole's at 22 inches on this side, which means I, I'm going to have to make a cut here because I want my clean, I want to cut that factory edge off. I also want to cut any of the rot because I'm using reclaimed wood. I want to cut some of that rot off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute again. I'm going to lock that off. I'm going to measure my 22 inches. I'm going to go ahead and finish these cuts, and then we'll start to work on our 43-inch cuts. And then we're going to use a tack nailer. I'm going to use a nail gun just to tack the wood together. Um, what I like to do with the reclaimed benches is I actually use the same screws and nails that I pulled out of the wood that I'm reclaiming or other wood that I'm reclaiming. I, I get my hands on all kinds of just old wood, old nails, old screws. Um, a, it saves me money on hardware, and B, it allows me to tell everybody, hey, even your nails are reclaimed with the exception of my pen nails that I use to tack it together. And it's just a good way to tack it together so that you have that piece going. Some coffee, also needed. And I need to get a remote. We're going to go ahead and mute that. And we're going to make our cuts. Pink. All right, back on audio. Not that anybody's watching. So we got our four 22 inches. These have some character. So if I'm doing a fascia or something that's not structural with those holes, I'm gonna keep them. So I'll put them in my stack of scrap. 
I like to try and use as much of the wood as I possibly can. <coughs> I do end up with a lot of little cutoffs, little pickets, and what we do is we burn those in a fire pit. Just kind of nice backyard fire pit. So we're going to do a 48s. Now these I have not prepared. I should have prepared them while I still had everything muted, which I will do now. Now, you probably can't see it, but off screen here, I have a little workbench. It's basically just a work table that is the same height as this bench. And with the two two by fours stacked, this sets perfectly across my saw fence. So I'm going to use that as basically a table or a bench extension because I've got a long piece of wood and that's going to support my 2x4. So I'm going to go ahead and prep these guys. Ooh, on, there we go. So I'm going to mute again. Yeah. Again. Let me pop this in in case anybody's... Uh, There we go, in case anybody pops in.
So now we have our frame pieces. And this is where the rubber meets the road. We're going to go ahead and hide this guy. What did my shit just do here? And there's our boxes, two boxes. I'm going to measure them to make sure. That's good. So we've got our two boxes, top and bottom, and they're going to sit like this. Wood. We'll just 
show that off real quick. Let's get some wood. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get these out of the way for now. Now again, I gotta remember, I just had these tack nailed. They're not very big nails. Um, it's just there to hold it together while I work with it. So we gotta make sure and keep that in mind. Now, let's break out our saw again. And power is always good. This is my power tool cord. It's always plugged in by the tool box here. Just kind of wound up in a messy fashion here. MDF from bench top. New wood. <laughs> so now is where we're gonna get really interesting. We've got our boxes both upper and lower. Now we gotta make our legs. Now our legs are gonna have an 11 degree cut on each side, but they're gonna be reversed from each other. And I am dropping frames again. Thank you, Discord. You Piece of dung. Go away, Discord. Quit, Discord. Thank you. All right. So, what you're going to see is an angle here. Okay. So, you'll have a low side and a high side. And then, in order to match that, I have to do the same angle in reverse on the other side so that even though the, the lumber is going to be at an angle the top will still be flat because we're going to go ahead and put a piece of lumber across that top to kind of cap it make it look good and give it a little bit more stability um, in fact that's might be what I use this split piece of lumber for if it's big enough let's see because I'm going to need it's not big enough, but that's okay. We'll find something. Usually I use a fence picket, uh, something of that nature. Let me dust some of this off so I can see what the heck I'm doing. Get our saw centered. So the front of our bench is going to be 17 inches tall. Okay, which means that I've got to cut my first angle at 11 degrees which is what I'm going to set my saw to. 10, 11. Okay, so there's 11 degrees. When I make my first cut, then I'm going to want to measure from where my inside edge is to my top outside edge to make my other cut, to get my 17 inches. So the easiest way to do this and I'm going to go ahead and see I moved my 2 by 4s from over there. That's why I keep these. So I can get my... I'm catching on nothing. So we're going to go ahead and mute again. Just so you don't have to hear the saw. And like I said, I'm going to have to do something with that GoPro for YouTube. But uh, we're muting again. Can't go that way. So now you see what the 11 degree does. Not bad. Now when we measure this, let's see if I can get to where you can see. When we measure this, I'm going to keep in mind it's going to be at this angle. So I'm going to measure to the far side. I'm off screen. So we're at this angle. Okay. 
so I want the top to be at 17 inches. So I need to measure my whole side there, okay? When I cut, I want to make sure that I'm at 17 inches from each side. So we're gonna do that real quick. Long side with short side, short side with long side. I want to reverse the angle. Right now I've got an angle going this way over here. And I'm about to cut an angle this way, which is not what I want. I want to cut the angle in reverse. Sure. So I'm going to measure from my long side. I'm going to get a 17 inch mark. I'm going to measure in from my short side. Get a 17 inch mark. And that's going to tell me, in fact, I can actually use one of my squares and line it up and that's going to tell me my angle right and uh, let's mute 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 now because I'm working with a long piece of wood I'm going to flip it ah, this way probably noticed that I didn't measure my first one out after I cut it and it ended up being uh, just a little too long in fact by 
about an eighth of an inch too long. So I went ahead and just trimmed it up. Now, we're gonna follow the same angles for our back legs, except our black, back, back, blah, 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 back legs, I want it 34 inches. So we're gonna go ahead and get our 34 inch mark. trick to get your marks when you're cutting angles, quite honestly. There's my 34 inch mark. One of the things that I like to do when I'm cutting angles like this is a lot of times I'll use an existing piece of wood as a straight edge that I've cut with my angle. Um, I can use my speed square, I can use pretty much anything. Again, with the speed square, you put your pivot on that line and then you just swing it over until you get to oops, so you slide that pivot off the line until you get to 11 degrees and there we are oops. and that's my 11 degrees from the pivot let me see if that uh, follows the same true and it does. So we know we've got our 11 degree cut. Except I went the wrong. Did I? I did. I need to go this way because there's my long edge. So my 34, my short edge is the other way. See? See how that works? So I'm going to get us there on that line, and we're going to just go the other way. And because I don't feel like monkeying with wood, I'm just going to move my saw. And we'll get right in now. Now, notice that knot is right there. This is going to be, I'm probably going to use this side as the bottom. Well, I'll use this side as the top and this side is the bottom because my structure is going to be here. Other than that, the back is going to be just our, our door piece. Um, and because it's at the top, it's not going to really, it's not going to take a whole lot of weight. Most of our weight's going to be up through here. So again, I want to make sure it's structurally sound. Um, we can always reinforce after the fact. Once you get the seat pickets on, it really does add a great deal of stability to these. Basically, we're going to cover each one with fence pickets, thus creating a box. And that's going to keep it from wobbling, and that's going to shore it up really well. I totally forgot the mute, so you get to hear that loud song. I do apologize for that. I absolutely forgot to mute. <laughs> Oops. Sorry, guys. Um, not bad. <laughs> so we've got one back leg, two front legs. We're going to keep this for our template. This time I'm going to mute. If it lets me. Here we go. There's my template. In fact, actually, I can use this as a template. Keep this over here because it's where it belongs. We're going to go ahead and drop you down.
Come on, fucker. There we go. Yeah. Oh, yes, it's messing with me. So now we have our legs. Front at 17. Back's at 34. Now, because we need to mount our lower and upper boxes to these level, I want to take my 17 across these 34s and get them nice and flush and give myself a detail mark of where that upper box is going to go. Right? And then I'm going to double check. That's going to give me 17 there. That's going to give me 17 there. Now, I like to mount that other box, the bottom box, a little bit higher than the ground. So we're going to give it a 2 inch mark. 2 inch mark. And I'm using the long edges, my front edges, on the back because that's where my box is going to come off. Because you lean back. And I'm going to use the inside edges on my front because that's where the box is going to mount. We did two inches, didn't we? Yeah, we did two. I think I did an inch and a half on my last bench. Um, which uh, is actually sitting out in the yard right now with a, with a side tail. But we'll go two inches this time. And this is going to be fairly straightforward. I've got clamps just in case. Um, I may or may not do it. Now, we're going to mount our top box first, I think. Now we'll mount the bottom box first, since we're here. So, I've got my box. I want to look and see which side of my box I want to be up front and which side I want to be in the back because the 2x4 is going to show. I like this one. It's got good character. And I want to look at which side I want to be on the top and which side I want to be on the bottom. And I want to go this way. So this is going to be my front. front there it's easier there's my front okay so this is my front this is my bottom we take our front we find our marking it's on the inside it's on the inside right there and we're gonna line up the bottom of the box with that front piece and I want to give it just a little bit of a gap here so that the leg kind of sticks out we don't want the front sticking out past the leg. So we're gonna go ahead and mute because I'm gonna start nailing. And again, I'm just gonna tack nail and that's it. So let's get our nailer. square 
Can you do this, Mark? So not right. <laughs> And there's our bench frame with the bottom box starting to look like a bench so you might have noticed I had a couple of brain farts setting the legs or well the last leg anyways I had the angle backwards which basically would have not worked for me so I set it the other way um, I used a nifty little trick with my squares here to line up and level my legs up against the bottom as well as the top of this box. And even though I have it shorter on this one, I was using two squares. Um, this one I set to a depth so I could see the top. Um, I'm still able to use the hash marks on the ruler to line up my bottom. So here I can see I'm at two inches on my bottom from here and I'm pretty level so that's kind of what I'm looking for I'm happy with it uh, 
Now we're going to go ahead and the top box is a lot easier. We can monkey with it. Um, because it's old lumber and there's mismatched pieces, some pieces are going to be a little bit larger than others. What I usually do when I'm nailing is I go for one flat side and that's going to be my top. So I already know which way my top is going to be. And again, I'm going to look at the lumber and see how I want the thing to look. And we are going to get some sag here, just because the weight of the wood. And we're going to go ahead and drop this guy in. And I'm going to dry fit it, basically. And we'll see how we like it. Now, I don't really want my seat to be flat, right? It just, I, I really don't. Um, some people like a little dip. So once I get lined up in the front, I'm going to go ahead and dip down a little bit in the back. And the dog's barking. I get to go yell at her in a minute. And I can see how much I'm... Hold on, let me help the dog. Allison! She likes to bark. She likes to bark. And I'm going to look at kind of how much my angle is here. I don't want to come below my front legs. But remember, I put those 17 inch hash marks here on each of the back wheels. So if I go down an inch, I'm going to get a little bit of a dip, not a whole lot. So probably more than enough. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do about a quarter inch on the front of this seat above this leg because I'm going to be tilting um, on this side. So let's get us a hash mark. Uh, we want an eighth of an inch. So the easiest way to do this is to steal one of these rulers, unless I got one handy. I do. It's always nice to have extra squares. So I'm going to give myself uh, oh, about an inch drop. Keep my hash mark there. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. What we're going to do is we're going to tack the back first and then I'm going to set the front to where I'm comfortable with it to where it's going to cap and cover this leg when I put my paneling on. So we'll mute again because I'm going to be nailing. Actually nailing is not too loud. We'll see. If you guys don't like it, yell at me. So I'm going to line this guy up with my pinch mark here. That's good. One inch. And I'm just going to pop a quick tack in. And we'll do two. Now, because the inside still has access to that bottom, I don't have to flip the bench over to tack nail that other side because I can tack it from the inside. So we're going to do that real quick. Should line us up pretty good. There we go. So now we've got a little gap back there, and I did kind of look, check, make sure you might have noticed me smacking the, the thing forward a little bit. That's to meet up with this guy. And then I'm going to get it as close as possible to even with my front legs. But I want it to where the long end of my front leg does not stick out. And remember, we're dipping back again, so the front of the box is going to be pushed this way and where the long end 
of my leg is, is going to go that way. So I need to bring the box up in the front. And again, that's where that kind of eighth of an inch comes in handy. And I'm going to get it kind of where I'm comfy with it, like that, and we're going to attack it. And unfortunately now, I'm going to have to bring the bench down to attack that other side just because of logistics being able to reach it and see where my eighth of an inch is. Because I can't see it from here. That nah, might be okay, let's see. Let's do it, shall we? Let's see if we can't do this right. Huh? How did I do that one? I went right level there. Starting to look like a bench frame. So now we're gonna bring him up and show him off, huh? If I can, without taking out all the fish rods sitting up on top. We're knocking my measuring tape off my hip. And there's our bench frame. Hope I did my measurements right. Woo. He's gonna sit. I need to cut him down to fit, or I can bring him across. But I'm gonna put a cross beam across the back that's gonna hold this. Just like that. I can also do a seat, except I don't like the wobble ones. So, we've got a bench frame. Voila! Now, I'm probably going to cut 48. It's actually going to be 46. Let's go right back here. And that's what's going to hold this once I cut it down a little bit. I'm going to cut this down on this side because I want a smoother edge than that. It's not a smooth edge. So we're going to cut that down with the circular. We're going to cut it down to 46. And then I'm going to cut a 46 2 by 4 here. And what's going to happen is this is going to sit here. And this is going to inset. And we're going to go level with our 2 by 4 here. And what that allows me to do is that allows me to nail this to the back brace 2x4 as well as down the sides. So I'll be able to get a little bit extra structure on that back piece. I don't want anybody leaning back and falling through, right? So we're going to need to cut this down to 46, which will be interesting. And we'll obviously need to get this bench off the deal. So we'll get our mark here, and we're going to get a mark back here, and we're going to get a different tool. We're going to get a beloved T-square. The nice thing is my bench is now a workbench, and we're going to go ahead and Mark him there. And there's our T-square. So we're going to do two cuts, one with the miter saw. It's going to be a 46 2x4. We've got our stock right there. 
I don't want, I'm going to have to cut that 11 degree angle off the end of it, but that's fine. I can live with that. And then we're going to pay, pull out the circular saw and we're going to do a 46 inch cut of our seat back. So let's get him, well, I guess, right over here. Got a very beautiful bench back. And we're gonna go ahead and do our minor cut first. Now, important to remember, I've still got my miter saw cocked at that 11 degree angle because that was my last cut. When you're working on a job site or with multiple people or even just yourself and you're in a hurry. Always remember to check your saw before you do your cut, um, particularly if you're working with other people on the job site, because all it takes is one guy to go, oh, I need to make a cut real quick, and the next thing you know, you're cutting the wrong angles. Always check it, you don't have to. Um, it's preference for me, uh, just habit, especially when you're working with other people's saws, other saws. You can adjust it, and we're going to go ahead and meet for it. Right on that now. 
And I button hooked that one. Of all the advice on checking the saw blade that I just said, I didn't check the depth of the saw blade on the scale saw. Decided to deepen it and make another cut. But that's okay, we came out smooth enough. It's gonna work. I got it cut, it's 46 inches. Well, we'll find out if it fits. So we're gonna get our bench back up here. Ha, barely stands up on there. And we're gonna put this guy pretty close here, right? We've got some schmutz there. I don't like that. But this is where we want to make sure we know how thick we need an inch and a quarter. Double check the other side. That looks like an inch and an eighth. An inch and an eighth. Okay. That's easy enough. Another trick. You can measure an inch and an eighth here. Inch and an eighth. And if you do this, you can use that as a marker. Scrub that out just like that, see? And that's gonna cock our, our two by four back an inch and an eighth all the way down. And we've got to decide how far down we want from the top. You know what? Let's do... Let's do an inch and a half. Inch and a half will do. We should be able to get an almost perfect... Yep. Inch and a half. And let's go... Inch and a half. And we're going to go ahead and get this cord out of the way so we don't trip on it while we're doing this. This one's going to be a little tricky. Sometimes I like to have help. Uh, sometimes it helps if you can clamp these two this way to hold it. Which, uh, eh, I have a Bessemeyer clamp here that's, well, it's four foot, and it would work, but I don't think I need it. Um, you can also use uh, toe straps, furniture straps, to clamp things with. They're always handy to keep around. I don't think I'm going to have too big of a deal. It's just one, one two by four that I'm popping up there. So... Right there. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in on one side and we're gonna set us along that line Oop. in an inch and an eighth. Yep, I'm gonna need a clamp. Or an even better idea is gonna be you there. Bring our bench down. Do one side, flip it over, do the other. There we go. Some people dowel. Um, if this was new wood, and not reclaimed, I would dowel, uh, dowel and glue, um, and then you put the screws in. So we've got one, let's get the other one in.
that nope a little more there is our seat back now we put slats now I kind of screwed myself with that seat back you see my problem? I don't have anything for my slats. So I need to cut another piece of lumber for my seat bottom. And then that's gonna go here. So let's get this guy. Planning error on my part. So now we're gonna make one more two by four cut. Um, huh. And it's gonna be a 46 inch cut, which means I need to be right back. Yeah, I'm gonna this bench right in my way, huh? Messages will be right back. Don't you have me back? Ha, would I lie? I would. Alright, let's get my stand back up here since I nudged it out of the way. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make another 46 inch cut. And this is just going to sit. In fact, it's going to sit this way. Instead of vertically, it's going to sit horizontally across to hold the back of our seat bottom. And I'm going to offset it forward a little bit so that you get... Because when you sit, your weight typically goes into the center of the seat, not the very back of the bottom. So I'm going to be able to kind of reinforce that a bit. But I can't use this piece of lumber that I grabbed because it's got saw marks right in the middle and I can't get a 46 inch piece so let's try again
All right, this one's got chucks taken out of it too, but I measured before I grabbed it. Ooh, it's got some rot. I don't like that. So let's see what we come up with, and worst case, we find another piece of wood, huh? <laughs> That'll do, that. that'll do, doggy. Okay, there we go. So now we have a bench frame, which I'm gonna slide up here for you guys to see. Let me get this saw out of the way. And my next video will be me putting the seat on in just a little bit. Well, maybe I'll just put the seat on right now, you think? because it might just be a lot easier. But, as you can see, put that piece right there, and that's gonna hold our seat a lot more firmly. And once we get the seat on, everywhere where we put our tack nails, we're gonna drive in some nice long screws, and that's gonna shore it up for the long term. Uh, I might do something with this back, I like the shabby chic of it. It's pretty cool looking actually. So I think we're good. Now, hmm. let's take a look at our bottom here. We're gonna measure. And we wanna measure off of the edge of this because you see it's, it's out a little more. 
but we're gonna hit it with our pickets. So we're at 19 and three quarters exact. So what I'll probably do is I'll go ahead and cut 20 inch pieces and that'll give us a slight overhang here. Just to kind of give it a nice look. I might hit it with the router, put an edge on it. Um, if I do that, I'm going to do 20 and a half. That'll give me three quarters of an inch, which is good. I always double check. 19 and three quarters all the way across. So I'm going to cut the pickets to the top. The bottom we're just going to encase because it's a shelf. And we're at 22 inches, which is how we built our box. This just happens to come out three quarters of an inch, which is fine. That's not a problem at all. In fact, it, it looks nice and flush. Our seat dips down just a little bit, not too bad. Everything's pretty decent. What I'm gonna do is probably leave this bench up here so that while I'm adding the pickets, you can see how I'm doing it. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut, um, in fact, I'll turn the camera a little bit or slide this down and I'll put the saw over here. And we'll go ahead and start encasing this. Um, now, the nails I've been using here to tack these are two and a half inch nails. They're long. They go through a two by four with enough beans on the other end without me having to pocket nail or angle nail. When I do my seat, I'm gonna to switch to a smaller nailer and I am going to be using probably three quarter inch, might be just plenty. Those aren't three quarter though, those are two inch. Um, let's see. Yep. Those are two inch 18 gauges. My 18 gauge stapler doesn't even take two inch, I don't think. Um, I'm going to switch to my 18 gauge though, and there's my three quarters. I'll probably use three quarters, five eighths maybe, um, or I might switch to my inch and a quarters. And we're going to go ahead and tack them down. So we're going to switch to smaller nails. We want to be able to go through the picket and obviously into our seat enough that it doesn't let loose. But as you can see, with the three quarter inch nails, we might not get enough bite there. So unless I drive them nice and deep, which I don't like doing because then they tear up. So we're not going to use those. Let's see what we have here. Five eighths, three quarters, inch and three quarters, two inch 18 gauge. Huh. Where's my neighbor? Those are monsters. We're going to need this other nailer. Bear with me. I'm going to stand just right off to the side here off camera. inch and a quarter. We're going to use inch and a quarters. So And what I like to do when I do the pickets on these, uh, sometimes I'll cut them off and see how they go. Sometimes I'll cut them and do them one at a time. It's kind of a this personal preference for me, how I'm feeling on any given day. <laughs> but I do have a ton of 16 gauge inch and a quarter staples or nails. Uh, we'll set this one down here to keep it handy because we're going to need it. So what we'll do is we'll kind of see how it goes. Um, I'll probably cut two or three and then we'll go from there. So here's my little table here. We can 
this morning so that you can see me. There we go. If I put the spins the other way, like that, I buy myself even more room. Look at that. So bear with me a second here. Like I said, I do have this on the GoPro after I edit some of the gnarly noise out. When I do the saw cuts, I'll just mute it and that'll go up on my YouTube channel. So, here's my cutting station. We're going to pop stuff there. Let me get my nailer ready. trigger. I don't like wonky triggers. That and this one holds more staples. More nails. There we go. So you back up over there. Now I'll be right back with some pickets. I think for this one I'm going to do the smaller pickets. Um, I do have large five, well five and five eighths. Um, pickets. I have five and seven eighths pickets. I have a bunch of three inch, four inch pickets. So I'll be right back with some pickets and we'll uh, get to it. All right, now I had a ton of pickets out there, uh, a ton of different sizes, so it's important to kind of get your same thickness, same size pickets. So I'm going to double measure just to make sure I agree upon what I wanted to do. After a sip of this coffee, and yes, I smoke and chew. Ah. But we'll go ahead and move these before I cut myself on them. Most dangerous things on job site are blocks. I think I agreed on 20 and a half because that was going to give me three quarter inch overhang. So I can route it and make it look pretty. So we're going to do 20 and a half. And I'm going to mute real quick. Ooh, let me adjust the camera just a little bit. There we go. Don't mind the brightness outside. Oh, it's reflecting right off that toolbox too. I'm sorry guys. All right.
Let's see how I did, huh? I got lucky I had some pickets that I had already cut the dog ears off of for another project. And they are the ones. I love that knot hole. Look at that. That knot hole is going towards the back so you can see through it. Because it skips that uh, strut I put in. And what I'm doing here is seeing how I want to space them. I like a solid bench bottom rather than spaced. It's kind of up to luck. Um, but I notice I have a little bit of missing overlap over here, which is fine. That's going to basically help my space. So, and it's an olive about an inch and a half. So what we're going to do is get our nailer and we're going to pop, you notice how I popped that first one down, I'm going to do the same thing with this second one. These are going to be my guides. Basically tell me where and how I'm going to space these. And 
Sometimes I like to find an old nail, which now that I've organized everything, I don't know where anything's at. Do, do, do. Reclaim nails, there we go. We'll get a couple. Let's see if we got enough of the same size to do. Oh yeah, we do, we got plenty. Plenty, plenty. Again, reclaim nails. Oop, I'm not even by the camera. There we are. Keep thinking the camera's over there. There's nothing over there. That's off screen. And we're gonna put these guys in just to see. If this gets us where we want to be. This is the same trick uh, fencers use when they're facing tickets on the fence they'll usually pop a nail in as long as you can hold the nails and again I'm just spacing so what I might do is just hit the center here let's see no, I'm gonna have to you build. that's okay I'll just slide you there and I think this is gonna work the beauty is, as long as I don't screw up the nail spacing while well, I'm in between, I'll be able to just nail them in place. Taking apart fence panels is an incredible pet pain in the ass. But, uh, It does keep a person busy and out of trouble, I guess. And if you do it right, you get a lot of screws and nails to use along with the wood for your project. And this is going to be too small, actually. So I'm going to have to eye it. That's okay though. Or, collect my nails in my nail bag. In my nail bag. <laughs> We'll have to space it. That's fine. There's two ways we can do this, depending on whether or not I want a gap. The gap's gonna make routing it a little interesting if I decide to route the edge. So I gotta bear that in mind because my router's gonna wanna dig in every time I do a, a picket. So I can cut another piece of picket, do a rip cut, and put it here, or I can space them. So what I'm going to do is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen gaps. So let's see. take my smallest point that I'm off. I'm off by an inch divided by where I come with. 13, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 gaps. So one inch divided by 13, that's a difficult one, isn't it? Huh. One thirteenth of an inch? 
Hmm. Okay. We're probably going to have to get a little tricky with this one. I could do one sixteenth of an inch. Hmm. Or I can eyeball it. We're going to eyeball it. Because one of the nice things about this style of furniture is the little things, the inconsistencies in the lumber, add to the style. See, I got too much of a gap. Basically, I want to just kind of get it to where I like how it looks. My gaps are a little bit, you know, kind of uniform. Just like that. I like that. And now I'm going to mute because I'm going to go nuts with the nailer. And the compressor is going to kick on.
<laughs> now, I kind of hosed myself here, but not really, because I need to get my pickets here. I can hit them from the front, and I can hit them from the back. So I'll be all right. Not a problem. And my top took 14 pickets. My bottom's going inside. So it's actually shorter. Um, pickets I was using, I got two cuts per. So I brought seven pickets in just to go with it. If I have an extra cut, not a problem. But we're also making longer cuts because we're going 22 inches instead of 20 and a half. These still have the dog ears on them. So what I'm thinking about doing is maintaining that dog ear and doing an overhang. But that's going to require more pickets, right? If I do that. Now I could do a dog ear followed by flat followed by another dog ear which would kind of look cool. Let's see. Let's take a look, shall we? So I have a dog ear piece right here. So I'm going to take a look at this, see how I like it. Bang, baby. Now I'm going to, oh, I just whitewashed that camera. All right, I'm going to mute and make these cuts. Now, what did I agree on? I needed 23 inches, right? With the dog ear. I needed 23 inches. Okay, I'm going to mute so I can cut. This is turning out to be a long stream. doing there's nothing there for you guys am I gonna have to move those uh cans Oops. set my angle since I cut that nut on the board Quick dry fit. Perfect. My template. Cool off. Grab a fresh pencil. That one's getting kind of squidgy. We do two at a time here. Speed it up. Let's do our cuts this way. Can we?
check and see how many we actually need, huh? See, I'm building up quite the uh, collection of wood here. Put that in the can. Ah, sip of cold coffee. Starting to get quite the wood collection there. I'll sip my cold coffee. And I'm going to see how many of these I'm actually going to need. Now, one of them I'm going to have to cut. That post, which won't be hard to do, that won't take long at all. I'll probably use a just a regular jigsaw for that. Actually, two of them I'm gonna have to cut, but I do like that dog ear look up front, it adds to the kind of like it's the finish, you know. Looks like I'm going to need a couple more. All right, that's fine. I got one extra over here, I know. Oh, we only got three to cut. After this one, we'll be okay. My first cut's my template. As long as I cut tightly on that line, get a good cut every time and they all match and you just got to kind of watch it a lot of people will use the template they'll switch to the next board and use that as a template the next thing you know you're way off <laughs> This Hitachi's been a good saw. It was low cost when they bought it. This is my uncle's. It's actually my uncle's workshop that I'm in. I uh, kind of moved into the basement to <laughs> take care of my aunt and help out around the house and generally be with family. I'm a very good family. I love my uncle. I love my aunt. Or my cousin. They're very good people. In fact, the first version of this bench I built just for my auntie. It sits in the yard right now. There's photos on, uh, no, there's no photos anywhere. I've got photos on Discord. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> One of the things I was thinking about last night while watching a couple of streamers is I should probably start streaming more. So this is my first Twitch stream ever. And I'm not going to have enough here. Look at that. I'm going to be short like two pickets, man. See how it's a little cockeyed? It's because it's sitting the way it's sitting. There we go, that might be better. So let me whack these real quick. And I will need one more picket. Probably two. Oh, look at that. I my pickets cut right up top. I'm gonna get these out the way real quick. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this up here against the frame 
and I'm going to make my marks. I'm going to make sure my dog ear is where I want it. We know the thickness of that. We measure it just to double check. Because it's one of the wider ones. It should be a little over an inch and a half. Yep. Yay. Inch and five eighths. So I'm going to take my little pencil. Maybe my inch and five eighths mark. And we're going to take our square. And we're going to mark those. And love that square. It's my grandfather. Come up to our mark. And that's what we're going to cut. And to do that cut, oh, we're going to knock shit over. jigsaw we're done with this guy for now so we can unfortunately the bench and this desk that's in here takes up most of my floor space otherwise I'd roll out another work table and I'd be able to keep that saw out for use a lot of lumber I gotta carry back out, but that's okay. Keep that saw out for use, and I'd be all right, but we'll see. While we're at it, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this one with an R for right. So we're gonna go ahead. And do the same thing here. This is another inch and five eighths. This time I'm actually going to use this square so I can set it. To an inch and five eighths. And then I can just do this. That's a trick, huh? Just slide that thing down. Ah, oh, hell. That sucks. Should have marked the other side. So I'm going to dry fit it. I might have to make slight adjustments. I might not. <laughs> I might not. Good. Beautiful. I'm happy with that one. Let's do the same thing here. This one's a, this one will be easier because I've got the long side of the board to hold on to. Yeah, 
Now, I'm a Stanley tool tester and they sent me a coping saw, which uh, I really only used once. This would be a perfect project for me to test it out on, but uh, I like the jigsaw. <laughs> What I do like is they also sent me this wonderful blade here, which I'll show you in a minute. It's quite fantastic, actually. It's become my favorite the utility knife out of the, I don't know, three dozen that I own. Uh, this is my favorite now, and I really love the grip on it. Now, if you, hold on, let me finish the cut. And I'll chit-chat while I dry fit this. All right, so now that I got that done, let's take a look at our bench with our GoPro. See if we get a good, tell me what you're seeing. What do you see? What is that? There's our bench. Okay, GoPro's got a nice wide field of view. I do like it. Um, dry fit that one. Uh, could use a little shaving. Right in the back there, so we're going to go ahead and just adjust that, just a touch. I'm not so worried about making it fit tight. Um, I just want to cover up, make it look clean. You know, it's, it's fencing, it's made to look kind of rugged, rustic. But there's our two sides. We're going to go ahead and tack those down real quick. As you can see, it probably would have been easier for me to do the bottom first. Because getting in there with the nailer is a little tricky. And I don't like how that board's sitting. There we go. Because there's no support. It's an overhang to cover this. So there's that guy. Let's untangle this. Wonkified. And I think I'm going to do the same thing down here as far as gaps go. Just kind of eye it. Because I like the way the gaps work. And this is going to tell me 